Welcome to Shop Talk with everyone's favorite branch, Chris Murray. Shop Talk is sponsored by Ironclad. Your choice for performance workwear and proud sponsor of the Ironclad Cycling Team. Well, we've got some good news for you and some bad news. The bad news is Chris is off in Hawaii with his new bride. Something about priorities, didn't want to show up for work today. The good news is we have Dwan Shepard here. Dwan, we hung around because we want to ask you the most important question, and that is, how do you go about making a tandem? Um, once we've established the size of, of the bike, then a drawing will go out to the production guys. And the first step in production is selecting the tubes that the bike will consist of. So we're talking about the aluminum or the steel tubing um, that makes up the frame. Um, and the mitering guy will make marks on that bike uh, based on what the CAD drawing says for where all the cuts need to be there. Uh, then he'll make the miters. Uh, we've got tooling set up on the lathe primarily for doing that. Some of it is done on a mill. Um, He'll make all the cuts very precisely. We're talking about tenths of a millimeter um, to, to make a frame properly, to make a really nice frame. Step three is tacking the bikes together. Um, we can show you one of the guys assembling all of those tubes that we just mitered and basically putting together like the pieces of a puzzle. He too will be looking at the CAD drawing. That's, that's his map of where everything belongs and the fixture is going to hold all those tubes precisely in the right place. Um, he'll follow both the marks on the tubing that the mitering guy left there and the CAD drawing to make sure everything is in exactly the right place. Uh, everything is held on center and at the proper angle for the geometry layout of the bike. Then he'll take his TIG welder and just put a tiny little piece of a weld on each joint just to hold everything together. Step four is welding the bike. Um, that's when the welder will take the tacked bike. He'll put it in a clamp where it's real easy to move the whole frame around and get you know, right by his helmet, every joint, so that he can really concentrate on just getting that welder right around um, and making a beautiful joint that is strong and uh, does not affect the alignment of the bike. The, the process of welding is not just making a beautiful weld, but doing it in a sequence that ensures that the bike stays straight. Um, so uh, the welding process is obviously a very key part of the bike. Uh, and if you look at how our bikes are welded, you'll see that uh, the welds are not only clean and, and pretty looking, um, and I'm talking about an unpainted frame here, but you'll see sort of a, a, a rainbow colors near the weld. The smaller that area is, the smaller your heat affected zone is. You want a small heat affected zone on a nicely welded bike. Uh, that's one of the signs that you look for in a raw frame. The step after welding is um, brazing, and uh, our brazing guys are uh, just as important as the welding guys. Um, they maybe don't take as many bows and get as many glory points, but um, brazing is a really key process for putting together the bike. We use the brazing for attaching things like water bottle bosses, uh, the, the brake bridges, the cantilever brake bosses. These are all the places where the parts interface the bike. After the brazing, we move on to finishing. Um, finishing is uh, a number of processes. One is making sure the bike is ready for paint. So um, there's part of finish work is sort of a sculpting thing. Uh, you can see the guys will go in with a grinder and do some sculpting where the dropouts have been brazed into the frame. The dropout being the part that your wheel slides into. Um, you'll also see, uh, you know, they'll do some hand sanding with some emery cloth, uh, which is a little bit of a sculpting and blending sort of technique to make sure that there are no, you know, rough spots or uh, 
we want everything to look just so in the final uh, product. In the paint process, um, you know, we, we use a catalyzed polyurethane paint. Uh, there's a primer coat that goes on, then there's color, sometimes uh, base coat and top coat of color. Uh, then the decals are applied, um, and our decals are actually not a, a film or mylar. They're, the end product that's on the bike is just ink. So, you know, there, you'll see when they apply it, there's a film that it's attached to. They'll rub on the outside of the film, pull the film off, and all that's left is our logo in ink. And that is uh, the only way that that can survive for any period of time is clear coating the bike. So there's uh, layers of clear uh, coating that go over the paint job and the decals to support um, uh, the decal itself and to provide a tough exterior for the frame. Um, after paint, the bike comes into our shipping department where um, typically our, our shipping guys will uh, not actually fully assemble the bike, but we put all the parts into one box and the frame in another box uh, and ship to our bike dealers around the country um, and around the world. Thanks again, Duan. Thank you, Sal. That concludes another edition of Velo Television. Thanks for joining us. Keep the rubber side down, and always remember to wear your brain bucket. See you next week.